Hey guys, it's Nolan with Dress Flight, and we're gonna be talking about Aton pylons today. Basically what it is, is it's a figure eight around two pylons, and we can constantly just keep going around each pylon nonstop. What it is basically demonstrating is it's demonstrating that we understand the ground speed, wind correction, but also now we're making altitude adjustments rather than our bank corrections, so that way we can maintain a visual reference point. And now we're also throwing in this thing called pivotal altitude. Some common mistakes that I've noticed a lot of people uh, have done throughout my training and teaching multiple students is a lot of people try to treat it as it turns around a point because they're going back to their primacy, they're going back to private. However, it turns around a point, right? We're just changing our bank. We're keeping our altitude the same. Now this time, we're keeping our bank the same and we're changing our pivotal altitude to basically have that visual line of sight with our pylon um, throughout the whole entire maneuver. All right, yeah, today we're gonna to be doing eight ton pylons. This is a commercial maneuver that's required on the commercial and CFI practical tests. Um, to start any maneuver, we're gonna go ahead and no one's gonna do the pre-maneuver checklist. So I'm gonna make sure my landing light's on. Uh, I got my air condition as required. I got my mixture set right here. Fuel quantity state, I'm at 13 and 13. I'm still on the right tank. And then I'm gonna make sure that the area is clear. So we're gonna do that by doing some just clearing turns. Um, 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right. We go ahead and start with 90 degrees to the left. So that way if we were gonna be getting overtaken, um, they would overtake us on the right side. All right, so as no one's clearing the area, um, what we're going to do is this is a maneuver we're going to enter on the downwind. So the first step to this maneuver is we are going to get properly established in the downwind. Now on a day like today, it's a little bit tough to find exactly where that downwind is when the winds are all shifty and it's very light and variable. So what I'm doing is, you know, we, we have our resources in here to look at the ADSB and what, what what the weather stations around us are reporting. But I'm also looking for things like smoke, like flags, birds, right? Um, and they can give you a good sense of where that wind is actually coming out of. Here we are. All right, so we are established in the downwind here. As a, we are established 45 degrees left into the downwind we're gonna get our pivotal altitude. So our pivotal altitude is basically, it's the altitude at which whenever we're going around this pylon, right, we're using our line of sight, and look, it does not move. So um, that means you won't see it pivot or anything like that if you're at the proper pivotal altitude. Your pivotal altitude's based off of your ground speed. So that's why we're paying such close attention to you know how fast are we going over the ground. The faster our ground speed is, that's gonna mean a larger turn radius. Therefore, we need to pull the nose back and slow ourselves down to maintain that pylon, which is gonna bring us to a higher pivotal altitude for that, that wind condition. Now, if our airspeed is falling off, right, and then we'll see the pylon come in front of us, we're going to want to catch back up to it and get that airspeed back to be at that proper pivotal altitude so we'll be pushing forward. Um, so the formula for pivotal altitude is you take your ground speed, you square it, and then you divide it by 11.3, and then you add the uh, field elevation. Um, best estimate for this area is about 530 feet. So right now, we'll look, let's see what kind of ground speed we're getting. So we're getting about 106 over the ground, 106 knots. So no one is doing 106 squared divided by 11.3. 531. That's 531. So that's 1525. So any, uh, you know, experienced instructor is gonna make sure whenever they go up with their students, they're not having them heads down, low to the ground in the plane, right? Personally, we look before the flight and 1549, 
that's the proper pivotal altitude. And that's why we're currently at about 1560 right now. We're at the proper pivotal altitude. We're 45 degrees to the left of the downwind. Okay. We have a constant power setting of 2300. Give us about 100 knots. We want a constant power setting because we will not change our power throughout the maneuver. If we need to go faster or slower, we're going to use our pitch to do that. Okay. So as we do this, we're going to go, and no one's going to bank between 25 and 30 degrees. So he's going to go ahead and drop your wing to about 25 to 30 degrees. And we got these little red houses, it looks like, right off of our wing. So what no one is doing is this is based off of the line of sight from him to the point. He wants to maintain a constant line of sight. And if he sees that it's moving forward or backwards, he's going to adjust his pitch based upon that. So right now, he sees our points are in front of him. So that means he needs to get higher ground speed. So he's pitching down and slowly catching back up. As those pylons get behind me, I start to pull back and pitch up so that way I can increase my ground speed. And what's important is to do this in a nice, smooth manner. And as we're doing this, we're looking for about 315 degrees of turn. And I can see it's coming up right about now. So we'll go wings level. We'll wait about three to five seconds, right? And then we'll go ahead and we'll do it to the right. Banking about 25, 30 degrees. And we've got a little pond right off of us. So no one's going to do whatever he needs to do to maintain that line of sight to that pond. So right now, he's pretty aligned on it. Uh, that pylon starts to get in front of me now. I'm going to go ahead and push that nose down just a little bit, build up some air ground speed, build up some air speed for him. That way I can go and catch that pylon. And we're doing this back to our original bugged heading, which was 45 degrees left of that one. Now we've got about 90 degrees left, so what we're doing is transitioning from this pylon to keeping an eye on where's that other pylon. So this way we can continue just doing a figure eight until, you know, told not to anymore. Two, three, four, and five. You look and there it is. Those are the red houses that I used as my first one. We can see it's in front of us because we're going, yep, there we go. We're having to increase our ground speed to catch back up to that pylon. So some common errors that you will see, um, especially uh, as they're just learning this maneuver in your commercial training, is the tendency to use your bank to try to maintain a pylon. That's absolutely, it, it defeats the purpose, right? It's all about energy management. You know, this is kind of the pinnacle of the ground reference maneuvers in the ACS. Um, and it's showing that you've mastered, you know, if you can maintain your momentum and your energy to maintain a pylon, um, that's the kind of level we want to be at. Now, yeah, there we go. There's, There's that 315. So, we like for the first turn to be 315 degrees. It's not a perfect number. It's not a anything near that. But what it does is as we're in the downwind, we constantly have wind pushing us. So it helps us standardize a way to build in wind correction for that wind drift that's naturally going to happen to the aircraft. Because it's not always perfect, we need, so we're in the second turn right now, we're going to need uh, the pilot flying to go and keep their eyes out so whenever that first pylon starts coming back, they can go wings level at the appropriate time and be able to continue it all day long. All right, so now, let me do some eight pounds. We'll give this a shot. <laughs> See if I got it. Switch us over to the left. Oh, 
Alrighty, so here I am. I'm at 45 degrees uh, left of our downwind. And I'm making sure that we are just about at our pivotal altitude that we pre-calculated. And I have the plane nice and trimmed out. All right, so we're 45 degrees left of the downwind. We're gonna, it says pick two suitable pylons. We're gonna do a 315 degree turn to the left around the first one. Wings level for about three to five seconds based off the winds. And then do it to the uh, right turn around the second pylon. And we're gonna do it all the way back towards around our initial heading. And what we're gonna do is look for that, that original pylon so we could just keep on doing a figure eight, okay? So here we are. We have a power set about 2300 RPM. Nice constant power settings. We don't want to change it. And now I'm going to go and bank just about 25 to 30 degrees. And I got this little tree right in front of us. I'm going to use that as my pylon. I'm going to keep on pushing forward. Right now I see it's in front of me, so I want to catch up to it. And what's important is that I'm only using our pitch to maintain the pylon. I don't want to change our bank. I don't want to change power settings. So that defeats the whole purpose. Negative, but I've been a little distracted. I'm back on track now. Nice and smooth. We're catching up to it. So now we're about aligned with it. And now, I'm gonna, as it goes behind us, I'm slowly going to start picking up. And maintaining, just doing exactly what we need to do to maintain it. So now it's in front of us again. We push a little bit. Wings level. And we're going to do about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Bank to the right. Find a pylon. So we'll use this little home right here with the Pull in the background? Yeah, pull. I'm just trying to maintain it. So as I see it's falling behind, I'm going to pick up the nose to catch up to it. There we go. It's nice and level. Now it's aligned with me, which is what I want. As it catches up, there we go. So now I'm going to start pushing forward. And as I come out to our original heading here, I'm looking for our original pylon. Very well. It's about right there. And now I can go. And there's my original pylon. And we can do it all day long. We're going to catch up to it, pushing forward. Line the plane, catch up. That's slowly coming. Now we are aligned with it. I just wanted to maintain that sight picture. So it's aligned perfectly with us. There we go, about 315 degrees. I'm looking for our house with the nice pool. And there it is. Right back on that second pylon. And now it's falling behind, so I'm going to pick up this nose. Keeping it aligned. I'm 34 from Cleburne. 
Indicate 149, ground 133. What we want to do is use our rudders because we, we want to avoid slips and skids. There we go. And now, if, on this one, we're going to roll out on our original heading because we get plus or minus 10. I'm about to cross over right 35. Here. There we go. And now we'll go ahead and we'll get away yeah, from the ground, do our cruise checklist. Which yeah. I will give you the controls. Uh, controls? You have the controls. Everything's all good up here where I am. And no one's going to go ahead and take us back home to Addison. Back home. So, eights on pylons. There's a lot of things going on, but the best part about it is that you can do so much in the maneuver beforehand. You know, to put your to give yourself the best footing on it, so you can calculate your pivotal altitude. Right? You don't need to necessarily go and select two pylons beforehand and everything like that. You can just go and bank what whatever's there. Here in East Texas, we always have something, um, and you can use that. What's important though is again, you don't want to use anything like cows, cars, or something that might get up and move mid maneuver. Um, and you also want it to be uh, easily distinguishable where after you go around your first pylon and you fly 315 degrees you're going to go around your second pylon you want to be able to remember what your first one was because that's my favorite thing whenever uh, we do come around the second pylon I say okay take us back around your first and it's uh huh the ACS standards what they test you on uh, throughout the maneuver is making sure that there's no slips and skids um, you're not exceeding 40 degrees of bank. Um, you're understanding the actual maneuver and you're doing it the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, what that means is basically not using your bank, not changing it, and changing your pitch instead of your bank. And then also on your rollout, you're rolling out plus or minus 10 degrees of your assigned heading. Just remember, we change our pitch, not our bank, when we're doing eights on pylons. I hope this helps. I hope y'all pass all y'all's check rides the first attempts. Please let me know if y'all have any suggestions, any questions. Leave a like, leave a subscribe, and comment down below.